What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pharmacology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about autonomic pharmacology, we talked about cardiac pharmacology, neuropharmacology or CNS pharmacology, we talked about the anesthetics, both general anesthetics and local anesthetics. We talked about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and much, much more. Today, we're gonna focus on the urinary bladder pharmacology. Think of the urinary bladder as two pieces. The bladder wall itself, which is made of smooth muscles known as detrusor muscle. And a urethral sphincter. How many sphincters does my urethra have? The answer is two. One is the internal sphincter, the other is external sphincter. Listen carefully, the internal is involuntary, but the external is voluntary. Why is the internal involuntary? Because it's autonomic. By definition, autonomic is involuntary. And why is the external voluntary? Because it is somatic. It is supplied by somatic nerves, which means voluntary. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my pharmacology playlist. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. This playlist has more than 300 videos. This playlist has everything you can imagine from A to Z, from albuterol to zephyr locast. Let's go back to basics. If you have watched my neuroanatomy introduction video, we talked about the 10 commandments of neuroanatomy. In commandment number five, thou shall understand the distinction between somatic and autonomic. So Automatic is voluntary, autonomic is involuntary. Autonomic is synonymous with the word visceral, which is synonymous with the word splanknik. They mean the same thing, they mean involuntary. If you ask the average nursing student, medical student, or even the average doctor, hey doctor, what are the types or the flavors of the autonomic nervous system? Most people say, oh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. That's a very easy question. Ho <laughs> ho. As if the enteric nervous system has left the chat. This is a big mistake because the enteric nervous system is part of the autonomic nervous system and it too deserves a seat at the table of the autonomic. The enteric nervous system is made of my enteric and submucosal. You can learn more about these by referring to my physiology playlist. But for today, we'll focus on sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic from sympathy, because sympathy, according to legend, is related to the heart. And the heart beats faster under the influence of sympathetic. Parasympathetic, because it's parallel to that. Remember that sympathetic nervous system is fight-flight when you are running from a tiger. Talk to me. If you're running from a tiger, do you want to urinate and defecate right now? Hell no! Do I have time? I want to survive! Okay, so you need to shut down the bladder, meaning relax its muscles, but constrict its sphincter. Relax the muscle so it does not contract and void. Constrict its sphincter so that urine does not leak out. Conversely, if you are in the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system land, it's the land of rest, digest, eat, read, and take a dump. If you're taking a dump, what do you want? Oh, I want to urinate. I want to void. So you need to contract the wall of the bladder, but relax the sphincter. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please drop your favorite animal emoji in the comments. The sympathetic autonomic nervous system is thoracolumbar. Look at this, thoracolumbar, okay? But the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system is craniosacral. Today we're talking about the urinary bladder. So we're trying to reach the bladder. How do you supply the urinary bladder, including the urethra, with sympathetic fibers and with parasympathetic fibers? When it comes to the sympathetic, remember it's thoracolumbar, and you want to reach the bladder, which is about here. Oh, so you need the lower fibers. The lower fibers are closer to the bladder. So we're talking about T11, T12, L1, L2, and those lucky people who have L3 sympathetic, all of this is going to supply the bladder with sympathetic fibers. These sympathetic fibers will relax the wall of the bladder, but contract the sphincter. Which sphincter? The internal, because the internal is involuntary, meaning autonomic. Now let's talk about the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. I want to reach the urinary bladder. Which fibers? The lower fibers. Of course, it's not gonna be cranial. That's way up there. We want it to be sacral. So S234, will form the pelvic nerve, also known as the pelvic splanchnic nerve, also known as nerfi erihentis. This nerve will supply the bladder by contracting the bladder wall 
while relaxing its sphincter. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionaries.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. If you've watched my physiology playlist, we talked about this in autonomic physiology, you have proximal fibers and distal fibers. We're trying to reach the bladder, so we're going to focus on this. Preganglionic is always cholinergic, always releasing acetylcholine, always reaching the ganglion. Whether the postganglionic is parasympathetic or sympathetic, I don't care. The preganglionic is cholinergic, always releasing acetylcholine. We call it cholinergic because of acetylcholine. How about the postganglionic after the ganglion? Well, that's a different story. If you are sympathetic, you will release norepinephrine onto alpha and beta receptors. But if you are parasympathetic, you are still cholinergic and you're going to release acetylcholine onto muscarinic receptors. Now here is the bladder. It has a wall which has the detrusor muscle, which is a smooth muscle. And the urethra has sphincters. The sphincter is a circular muscle. It goes all the way around. We have an internal sphincter and an external sphincter. The internal is involuntary because it's smooth muscles supplied by autonomic nerve fibers. But the external is, is a skeletal muscle supplied by somatic nerves. Now let's talk about the parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, and go to the bathroom. If you want to go to the bathroom, I'm going to contract the bladder wall to void and to empty the urine, to push the urine out. Also, under the influence of the parasympathetic, you tend to relax the sphincter. Which sphincter are we talking? Internal. And if you want to relax the external, this is somatic, this is volitional. Your brain is going to tell your bladder to relax. It's not automatic, it is learned behavior. How about the sympathetic then? If you want a sympathetic, this is fight flight. I'm running from a tiger, I do not have time to waste voiding. So I need to relax the bladder wall by beta-3 receptors and constrict the sphincters by alpha-1 receptors. When the parasympathetic is talking to the muscarinic, the parasympathetic nerve fibers are releasing what? They are releasing acetylcholine onto the muscarinic receptor. But when the sympathetic fibers are trying to tell the beta receptors to relax the bladder wall, they are sending norepinephrine. Whether you're talking to the beta on the bladder wall or to the alpha-1 on the internal sphincter. Now let's take it to the clinic. Let's say that we have a patient who has urge incontinence where the bladder is too active. What should you do? We're trying to inhibit the bladder wall that is too active. If it's too active, I'm trying to do the opposite by inhibiting it. We can do this by oxybutynin, tolterodine, solifancin, and flavoxate. How do they work? They inhibit M3. And if you inhibit M3, you inhibit the contraction of the bladder wall, so the bladder relaxes a little. And this is called detrusor relaxation. The same patient is complaining of leaking urine. Why? The bladder is too active. Help me. Well, we can do something else. We can boost the beta-3. When you boost the beta-3, when you stimulate the beta-3 receptor, the beta-3 will relax the bladder wall. So we can give mirabigrone, which is a beta-3 agonist, also leading to detrusor relaxation. So when the bladder is too active as an urge incontinence, the treatment is a muscarinic inhibitor or a beta-3 agonist. Next, what if we have the opposite type of patient where the bladder is too weak, the bladder does not want to contract at all, the patient has urine retention. Well, the treatment is to give the bladder a push, to cause the bladder to contract, bladder to contract, B, C. Bethanicol, bethanicol, bladder contracts. How does that work? It stimulates the M3 receptor. And this is part of the parasympathetic, which means rest, digest, and go to the bathroom. I'm gonna give the bladder a push. When the bladder is too lazy, we want to give it a push. And bethanicol can do this for you to cause detrusor contraction, not relaxation. Then we have another type of patient. The patient who has a very big prostate gland or a patient that has cervical cancer where the urethra is constricted a lot. What do you do? You relax the internal sphincter. How do I do this? By inhibiting alpha-1. How do I inhibit alpha-1 receptors? Prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin, alphazosin, tamsulosin. Prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin, alphazosin, tamsulosin. And this does what? Relaxes the smooth muscles of the internal sphincter, which decreases the dynamic bladder outlet obstruction. But there is another type of bladder outlet obstruction, which is the static bladder outlet obstruction. How do I inhibit this? 
Well, you inhibit the 5-alpha reductase by giving a medication like finasteride. When you inhibit the 5-alpha reductase, the testosterone will not be converted to dihydrotestosterone. Now, dihydrotestosterone will decrease, which decreases the prostate tissue volume, and this is going to help patients with benign prostatic hyperplasia. If you want to take it to the next level, watch my video titled Urine Retention and Urine Incontinence, which you can find in my urology playlist. And there is another video titled Urine Flowmetry or Urine Flow Studies. To summarize, if my bladder is too active as an urge incontinence, give me a muscarinic antagonist or a beta-3 agonist. But if my bladder is too weak, give me a muscarinic receptor agonist. If I have benign prostatic hyperplasia, you can give me this, you can give me an alpha-1 blocker, you can give me a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Here is a case for you. We have a 67-year-old diabetic male with benign prostatic hyperplasia, complaints of urinary frequency, weak and inconsistent urine stream, continuously leaking urine even during sleep. On physical examination, there is suprapubic tenderness. Which of the following medications is the most likely to help this patient? Is it A, B, C, D, E, or F? Pause the video. Let me know your answer in the comments. Your bladder has a beta receptor. You know what else has a beta receptor? Your heart. You can learn about the beta agonists, the beta blockers, the anti-hyperlipidemics, anti-arrhythmics, anti, anti anginal medications, anti-hypertensives, diuretics, and digoxin by downloading my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionatis.com. To learn about the nicotinics, the muscarinics, the alphas and the betas, the sympathomimetics, sympatholytics, parasympathomimetics, parasympatholytics, download my autonomic pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionatis.com. My courses come with videos, notes, and cases. Urine retention is one of the post operative complications that can happen after surgery and I have a surgery high yields course waiting for you on my website medicosisperfectionatis.com. Urine retention can also happen after labor and delivery especially if the mother received anesthesia. You can learn more about obstetrics and gynecology by downloading my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectionatis.com. Help me make more videos by supporting the channel go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.